Today I've got a really interesting problem from TMUA Guru and I really like this problem because if you've just done A-level maths you might not be able to answer this or not be super confident in how to answer this but if we think about this we should be able to answer this even though this sort of question wouldn't come up in an A-level exam. We want to rationalize 1 over 1 plus root 3 plus root 5. Now why wouldn't this come up in an A-level exam? Well, basically because we normally only have like one square root thing uh, in the denominator. So how do we go and deal with it when there's two? Now, I could just write out the solution, but I want to give you a bit of intuition. If I was given this in an exam, I don't know if, you know, the formula, I guess, for rationalizing something when there's two things in the bottom. How do I deal with it? Well, I'm going to take a step back and ask myself, well, how do I deal with it when there's just, you know, a normal thing um, in, in the bottom? So if it's like a plus root b. So that's the stuff that we're used to dealing with. And what we do is we multiply the top and bottom by a minus root b. And the reason that that rationalizes the denominator, in other words, makes the denominator an integer, is because we're using the difference of two squares. So we multiply top and bottom by a minus root b. And this multiplied by this, you're going to get the difference of two squares. And squaring something that's been square rooted kind of cancels it out. So we want to do something similar here with 1 over 1 plus root 3 plus root 5. Now, the natural thing to want to do is multiply the top and bottom by 1 minus this square root term. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Like so. Now, why does this work? Well, it actually won't work immediately. But hopefully you can see if I uh, multiply these two denominators together, I'm going to get 1, so 1 times 1, minus then root 3 plus root 5 squared. Now, I don't know what root 3 plus root 5 squared is off the top of my head, but it's going to be an integer term plus something times root 15. But then at the end of the day, what will I have on the bottom? Well, it will just be an integer plus root 15. And then what I can do, or plus something times root 15. And then I can just use the bog standard, um, you know, rationalizing denominators to kind of get me from there. So let's check this. And there's actually a really nice trick we can do along the way. So let me let me show you what that is. So let's multiply the numerators together. That's very easy. That's just 1 minus root 3 minus root 5. And on the bottom, we get the difference of 2 squared. So it's 1 minus, so this will be 3 plus 5 plus 2 root 15, like so. Let's just simplify this. So we get 1 minus root 3 minus root 5 all over, so 1 minus 8, that's negative 7, then minus 2 root 15. Now, natural thing to do is multiply top and bottom by minus 7 plus 2 root 15 in order to rationalize this. So I'll do that here. So that's going to equal 1 minus root 3 minus root 5 times minus 7 plus 2 root 15, Ooh, like so. Now, what do I get on the denominator? Well, I'm going to get 7 squared, so 49, minus 2 root 15 squared, which is going to be 4 times 15, which is 60. Okay, cool, lovely. Now, here's the trick for simplifying the numerator. You could just expand this, but I'm going to be smart about how I do this. Um, I know that when I multiply these two brackets together, I'm going to get a constant term. So like a just a, an integer term, sorry. I'm going to get a root 3 term. I'm going to get a root 5 term. And I'm going to get a root 15 term. And so all I need to do is really consider the coefficients of those. Now, Let's start with the integer term. 1 times minus 7, that's nice and easy. That's minus 7. Now, how about the root 3 term? Now, how can I generate a root 3? Well, one way I could do this is by multiplying the minus root 3 by minus 7. That gives me positive 7 root 3. Another way I can get a root 3 term is by multiplying the minus root 5 by the 2 root 15. That's going to give me minus 10 root 3 because the root 5 is kind of squared to give me a 5. So I've got 7 root 3 minus 10 root 3. So that's going to be minus 3 root 3, like so. Um, what about the root 5 term? Well, similar thing. We can get root 5 by doing minus root 5 times minus 7. That's positive 7. But then I can also do minus 3 times 2 root 15. And the root 3s will come together to give me a 3. And so that's going to be plus 7 root 5 and minus 6 root 5. So that's just plus 1 lot of root 5. Now, how can I generate a root 15 term? Well, the only way I can do that is 2 root 15 times 1. So that's just plus 2 root 15, and that's all over negative 11. So if I just make this a positive 11 and turn this positive and these guys negative, that should be my final answer. And that is option 1 here, so the first guy up there. Now, this step here, this little trick I showed you, you might be a little bit hesitant. How do I know I've got all the terms? Well, 
If we think about expanding this times this, I've got three elements in the first bracket, two in the second. And so if I was to expand it out and not simplify, I would expect to get six terms. And that's what we've got here. We had one term in that plus seven, one term in the two root 15. And if you remember with these root three and root five terms, there were two terms each. So one plus one plus two plus two, that gives us those six terms. So this is genuinely the correct answer. And the answer here is option A. If you want a nice little extension to this problem, consider what if you add more roots? So if I added plus root, I don't know, seven or something on the bottom there, how would you deal with that? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.